welcome back in this lecture i'm going to continue my discussion on light scattering technique for molecular weight measurements i will also talk about techniques related to size measurements for polymer molecules so basically i will continue with the discussion on static light scattering and i will briefly talk about dynamic light scattering techniques now if you recall in last lecture i had discussed light scattering from at the beginning one small particle and this was the expression where alpha is the polarizability which is related to dn by dc square where is dn by dc is refractive index increment next i moved on to a collection of small particle gaseous particle and for light scattering from many gas particle we got this expression where m is the molar mass or molecular weight c is the mass concentration in terms of mass by volume next we moved light scattering from solution of small particle now when we talk about small particle we talked about particles which have radius less than lambda prime by 50 where lambda prime is the wavelength of the incident light in the medium now this is not a very hard and fast rule that this radius has to be less than lambda prime by 50 it could be lambda prime by 40 30 depending upon the particle we are discussing or in the particle in our hand so if you talk about visible light then this small particle will have radius around 8 to 10 nanometer so the particles which have radius less than 10 nanometer we will have this light scattering expression applicable to them we talked about that light scattering for solution also depend on the light scattering due to concentration fluctuation of the solvent molecules as well as the solute molecules in this case polymer molecule for the solute molecule the light scattering from solvent molecules were nullified by taking excess rayleigh ratio as representative here and the concentration fluctuation from solute molecules were accounted by this vrl expression related to osmotic pressure now if we replace this r and optical constant then the expression came like this now this m we will just talk about little more about this particular molecule right when you talk about polymer molecules we have a mixture of molecular weight so in this case which molecular weight whether it's a number average molecular weight weight average molecular weight which molecular weight is applicable that we will see now so for that we'll consider a, cons a solution having very low concentration approximately zero near to zero then that expression will turn out to be this now we assume that this excess rayleigh ratio for a number of polymer molecules in solution is given by summation of the excess rayleigh ratio for individual polymer molecules hence we can write the total excess rayleigh ratio as the summation of rayleigh ratios for individual molecules hence we can write this expression where mi is the molecular weight of individual polymer molecules and c is the concentration for individual polymer molecules remember this is in weight by volume so we divide both side uh, this uh, this uh, all the terms by c and multiply by c which gives the expression like this now this is we know it is mw hence 
in this case the m which we are talking about is m w hence we will write the expression as this for a polydispersed polymer molecule. Now for a small particle we can get the value of m w by this expression itself if we make few solutions of that particular polymer having different concentration in the range of dilute polymer solution and then plot Kc by delta R against concentration then we will get the intercept as 1 by Fw and the slope would be A2 because if we deal with very low concentration solution then these terms will be neglected and this plot is known as Debye plot and it is applicable for dilute solution and small particle and when we make small particle we mean particle which has a radius about less than 10 nanometer for visible light experiment. Now this typical concentration is about 1 to 5 milligram per ml that is the typical concentration generally used for this experiment but this is there is no hard and for first rule we can vary this concentration depending upon our polymer solvent system polymer molecular weight as well. So when the polymer size is small enough then we can calculate or we can determine the strat scattering intensity at any angle and by plotting this with concentration of solution from the intercept we can get the value of mw using Debye plot and we can also get the value of a2 which will give us value of polymer solvent interaction parameter chi. Now next move to light scattering from large molecules in solution. Now we there are polymer samples which are very large and what is the equation relevant for those system which we will now discuss. Now light scattering for large particle large means as we discussed it has to be greater than the radius has to be greater than lambda dash or lambda prime by 50. If we have a large particle like we have shown here in that case the scattering intensity or the scattered light from different part different part of this large molecule in this case polymer molecule will have different path length to cover for this case it has to cover this length plus this length whether this part will cover this length plus this length. Now when we our scattering angle is not 0 then you can see that these two scattering radiation are not in phase they are out of phase hence the scattering intensity will get reduced as we increase the scattering angle. At scattering angle 0 there will be no destructive interference. So the scattered light will be in phase and we will have the highest intensity of scattered light but unfortunately we cannot detect or we cannot determine the intensity of scattered light at 0 angle because there is a transmitted light which is the more major portion of the light which will come into this detector and it is impossible for any equipment to determine the scattered light intensity at the detector which is placed at 0 degree. So intermolecular interference intramolecular we are talking about intramolecular interference leads to a reduction in scattering intensity as the scattering angle, angle increases. So higher is the scattering angle higher would be this interference 
as a result the scattering intensity will come down and that happens for a large particle. So if we see the scattering envelope this outside one is a symmetric as we discussed earlier which is for sample having small or particle having small size. So, in this case i theta is in this case small particle i theta is equals to i 180 degree minus theta symmetric whereas this is for large particle where this symmetry is broken and as the theta increases the intensity of scattered light actually decreases. So, if we plot instead of i theta if you plot the excess Rayleigh ratio or Rayleigh ratio then for small particle we will get a angle independent scattered as we discussed earlier. So, the value of excess Rayleigh scattering excess Rayleigh ratio, ratio or Rayleigh ratio is independent of angle for a small particle where it is indeed dependent on the angle scattering angle for large particle. For the large particle Rayleigh ratio or excess Rayleigh ratio is not equally not equal at all the angles. So, we, we will have to add a another term p theta for the expression which we deduced earlier where p theta is the ratio at the angle of measurements with the 0 degree delta r theta. In this case we are putting a subscript theta that means this term for a particular angle theta because for larger particle this value will depend on the value of theta whereas for small particle we did not put this theta because the term is not dependent on the value of theta. P theta is scattering particle scattering factor and the size goes increases or the angle of uh, measurements or scattering angle increases the value of P theta actually comes down and the highest value of P theta when theta becomes 0 is 1. So, P theta is either 1 or less than 1. So, we have now included in the expression for this value we have now included a term P theta. Now, following Debye and Gwiner for a monodisperse Gaussian coil we are not going into derivation of this expression we can just write the expression for P theta which is given by this where this term is radius of gyration. And this is valid for dilute solution and low scattering angles. Now, if you look at the depend angle dependence of this p theta, p theta is plotted with sin square theta by 2 in this case. As you can see, when the radius increases or size of the particle increases, the angle dependence increases. So, there is a sharp decrease in p theta value when the size increases, but when the size becomes lower and lower the angle dependence actually comes down and when it is 10 nanometer this is very small. So, in this case when we this was deduced there is no assumption was made for about the shape of the particle. Hence this gives an as an, an unambiguously the quantity radius of gyration. Of course, looking at this curve we can see that this experiment angle dependent experiment 
be only useful for the particle which has larger size which have angle dependence of this term. But if the particle is size is low then there is no angle dependency on this term hence this will not be useful. So, this angular dependence experiment is only useful for particles having larger than this value which is which is nearly more than 10 nanometer for visible light. So, in, in last slide we showed about the size, how does it translate to uh, actual polymer molecule, how the value. So, in this case again we plot P theta versus uh, um, this is uh, theta, the angle of measurement and in this case you see that when this is polystyrene molecular weight when the polystyrene molecular is below about 100 k about below 1 lakh then the angle dependency of p theta is very negligible. When the molecular weight increases then the angle dependency comes or becomes significant. So, if we synthesize or if we deal with polystyrene molecule which is less than approximately 1 lakh molecular weight, then we do not need a angle dependent study. We can actually get the molecular weight information to a fairly accurate value by only using Debye plot, where we can just consider the scattering intensity at any angle. But if the sample or if the polymer which we are dealing with is higher than say about 1 lakh then we need to do a angle dependent scattering light scattering study to get accurate information. Now, so this is the expression we finally have it in our hand and we we have seen that the light scattering intensity or the excess Rayleigh scattering Rayleigh ratio or this term depends on both concentration of the polymer solution as well as the theta which is scattering angle. Of course, on the radius of gyration value and molecular weight value of the polymer molecule. So, for analyzing the data if we extrapolate to 0 concentration then that will eliminate intermolecular scattering effect. So, ideally we should do a experiments with one molecule but which is not possible for us. So, we can actually extrapolate to 0 concentration in doing that we will be able, able to eliminate the intermolecular scattering effect. If we extrapolate to 0 angle then we can eliminate the intramolecular scattering effect and again ideally if we can do the experiment at 0 angle then we can remove this intramolecular scattering effect as well, but as we cannot practically do a measurement at 0 angle we need to extrapolate the scattering intensity at several angles to 0 angle to remove the intramolecular scattering effect. So, this is what is done by scientist Bruno Zim and this plot is called Zim plot. In this case a set of polymer solutions are made in different concentration dilute region say for example, C 1, C 2, C 3, C 4, C 5 different concentration and me measurements for each of these solutions are done at different scattering angle and this the value of this is plotted 
with respect to sin square theta by 2 plus k prime see this k prime is kind of arbitrarily chosen constant to to make this data in a 2D matrix and C is the concentration. So, these open circles they are actually experimental data and this field circle they are extrapolated data. So, if you for example, if I go through this line and then extrapolate this line would be for effectively 0 concentration and at different scattering angle. So, basically in this experiment I take a particular concentration solution and measure at different angle. Take another concentration and take a measurement at different angle. Similarly, another concentration solution and take a measurement at different angle and then we extrapolate to at 0 angle each of this line extrapolate to 0 angle and each of this concentration at a particular theta is extrapolated to 0 concentration. Hence, this line would be for 0 concentration and this line would be for 0 angle. Now, if you plot concentration 0 in this case, then this line will give us the information about radius of gyration and if we have theta is equal to 0, then this term would be 1, then this line will give us information about A2 and intercept will give us the information about MW. So, from the intercept which ideally should be interception of theta is equal to 0 line and c is equal to 0 line will give us 1 by mw, c is equal to 0 will give us information about radius of gyration and theta is equal to 0 line will give us information about the second virion coefficient, hence the polymer solvent interaction parameter. Now, while doing the measurements we have not taken or we have not made any calibration curve. Hence, these are absolute measurements. So, in these experiments we get the absolute values of Mw A2, hence the polymer solvent interaction parameter and radius of gyration. We can also find out some idea about the shape if we plot the p theta value at c tends to 0 and then plot with q square s uh, this should be this s where q is the scattering vector. So, in scatter light scattering technique we can use to determine molecular weight in a broad range from typically this is the range where we can do the measurements and the lower limit of MW measurements determined by the ability to detect small value of scattering and also variation of DNDC with molar mass at very low masses. Generally in this till now we have not considered that DN by DC was dependent on the molecular weight we have considered this to be constant, but at lower molecular weight range this may become dependent on the molecular then that will limit the measurement as well as from the lower molecular weight polymer the scattering intensity becomes low and low hence the there is a limit to which we can go down in terms of measurements of lower molecular weight. The upper limit corresponds to the molecular weight dimension approaching lambda prime by 2 when complete destructive interference of light scattered from different parts of the same molecular augers. If the particle size is too high, then there will be complete destruction of 
scattered light due to interference from different parts. This experiment has to be done in very temperature controlled uh, system. It has to be thermostated plus minus 0 0.01 degree. Otherwise, uh, there will be a lot of error. And typically, these are the laser which are used uh, for the measurements. And because the scattering intensity dependent on dn by dc square, if you re recall alpha or the polarizability is dependent on dn by dc square. So, dn by dc should be as large as possible to make the measurements more sensitive. And the, so, solvents which have refractive index substantially different from that the polymer should be chosen. And of course, the value of dndc at the wavelength of incident radiation must be known accurately at the temperature of measurement. And this is another important uh, parameter that samples must be dust free. If there are dust particles, then they will those particles will actually scatter more light than the actual polymer sample and there will be a lot of error in the measurement. Now, the light scattering detector actually measure in terms of millivolt. Hence, the detector output has to be also calibrated. The, the, the signal in terms of millivolt has to be converted to light scattering intensity and for that, a, a solvent with known light scattering intensity is used to calibrate the detector. And also the detector at different angle has to be normalized with respect to one particular detector and for that 90 degree detector is taken and one isotopic scatterer like polystyrene with uh, 30,000 molecular weight which is known to scatter symmetrically. And so one, the signal from all other, all other uh, scattering angle are mm, normalized with respect to 90 degree detector using a polystyrene of 30 K sample. Now we will move to briefly about the dynamic light scattering, which is used to measure the hydrodynamic size of a solute in this case polymer molecule. Now, dynamic light scattering measures Brownian motion and Brownian motion all of us know that is a random movement of particle due to bombardment by the solvent molecule and surround uh, and the surround, uh, surround which surround them. The velocity or the speed of Brownian motion is dependent on uh, defined by translation translational diffusion coefficient which is expressed as d. Speed of Brownian motion is influenced by particle size. Of course, the smaller is the particle, higher is with, will be the Brownian motion. And the viscosity of the medium, higher will be the viscosity, slower would be the Brownian motion. And temperature, temperature will affect the velocity of the sample as well as the motion speed of the particle present. Hence, te temperature needs to be accurately known due to its important viscosity. It, in it can influence the viscosity which can influence the Brownian motion and it must be stable during a measurement to avoid any wrong random convection current. Now, as we have seen earlier that in a light scattering experiments, the scattering intensity is can be measured at different time and the average intensity which is taken in case of static light scattering, whatever we are discussing now. But this, this fluctuation of intensity can be used to measure the translational diffusion coefficient in dynamic light scattering technique. And that is what we will discuss now in brief. So, as you can understand that if we, if we have a small 
if we have a small particle then the fluctuation will be higher and if we have a large particle then the fluctuation will be lower. In this case y axis is i theta and x axis is time. So, with time the fluctuation will be higher for a small particle and fluctuation in the scattering intensity because the Brownian motion speed is higher for smaller particle. Now, we can use this information and find out the translational diffusion coefficient by a method called autocorrelation analysis. So, in this case this signal is correlated at different time and in short the correlation coefficient correlation coefficient is plotted with time. So, the smaller particle which will lose its correlation from initial signal. So, this is a correlation is 1. So, the value of this is 1. So, that means the with time there is no change in the signal, but as more fluctuation happen which happens for small particle then the correlation is lost at a lower time and when we have a larger particle then correlation is lost at a faster is a lower uh, longer time. This is like if you basically if we take a I have a room with a fixed dimension there are many people who are randomly moving around and I have taken I have placed a camera on top and I am taking the photograph at different time. Now, if there are small kids they will run around faster. So, the the match between the photographs taken in different time will lose with the original photograph at much faster time whereas, if the person who are bulky nature or aged person then they will move slower. So, the photograph at the beginning will have some similarity with time it will take some more time than the than the kids to lose the correlation with the initial initial photograph. With this information correlation coefficient with time we can get the information of of uh, diffusion coefficient. So, this software can actually construct the time correlation function of the scattering intensity according to this expression where i is the intensity t is the time and this is the time difference of the delay time. And this correlation function can be modeled like exponential function like this where the terms are shown here and most importantly d is the translational diffusion coefficient. So, using this correlation function we can get the value of d and the diffusion coefficient are obtained from this expression by fitting the correlation function with a suitable algorithm. Now, d once we get the d we know the d of an isolated polymer molecule is related by frictional coefficient by Einstein equation using this expression which I discussed earlier also and this frictional coefficient of a spherical particle rigid spherical particle is given by Stokes equation as this for spherical particle that is important which is called the rigid spherical particle where R h is the radius hydrodynamic radius. So, we combine these two we get this expression for R h and this expression is called Stokes Einstein equation. So, we define R h R h is the radius of a hypothetical hard sphere that diffuses the same speed as the particle under examination. Now, the particles for which we this we 
did measure the dynamic light, light scattering that may not be exactly a spherical. It could be a polymer random coil or a ellipsoid type or sometimes even very uh, like a cylindrical type molecule. But Rh means we are assuming that to be a hard sphere which has the same translational diffusion coefficient like the particles which under examination. So, please remember that this is a the, the, the value of Rh we, which obtain from dynamic light scattering is the radius for a equivalent or hypothetical hard sphere which has the same translational diffusion coefficient as the particles which are examining. This is indicative of apparent size of dynamic uh, hydrated or solvated particle. It does not provide any information about the shape. We can get information about the shape if we can accurately measure the radius of gyration from light scattering, static light scattering technique and if we can get the uh, value of uh, hydrodynamic radius from dynamic light scattering by combining this static and dynamic light scattering technique which can get some about some idea about the shape of the polymer molecule or other molecule. So, with this I come to end of this lecture and I will talk about uh, gel permeation chromatography in next lecture.